Let me, um, before I start, let me just pray. Are you all right with that? Father God, I just want to lift up my hands in your hands, Father God, my life in your hands. I ask you for your grace, for your mercy. I know you give me your word. I pray for your touch, for your anointing. Give me clarity in mind and speech, what to touch on. Commit this time in your hands. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Isn't it beautiful? There's such a peace of God upon this house. Amen. Um, I just want to say thank you all for your love and your prayers um, and the flowers that you've sent us. Um, I have peace in my heart um, that two days ago God spoke to me. Uh, no, two days ago the nurse came, rang me up and said that your mum um going through a downhill, not eating and they're semi-conscious. And, uh, and that night I prayed to God and I said, the Word of God talks about that there's a time that God ordains us when we're born and there's a time the way God ordains us when He's going to take us home. Amen. And that night I surrendered my mum to Jesus, my mum to the Lord, and I said, not my will, but your will be done. And I didn't expect that that was going to happen so soon. But that night, the next night, she passed to go to glory. Amen. And we're relieved because she didn't, as Sean was saying, she didn't have a quality life because she was um, going to be 99 on the 10th of August. <laughs> and uh, But praise God, in the midst of that, I have peace. And God is good and He's in control. Amen. She's in a better life. Amen. She, she's now gone to be with my dad and her 10 siblings up in heaven. So she's having a reunion party and she's celebrating to God. Amen. Amen. So I feel really pleased because I know where she's going. And I know where she's going. I have that peace and a rest. And we can't wait to celebrate her life on the 7th of August. It's going to be amazing. This woman is a mighty woman of God. All right. Um, the, the title of this message is here. It says, your breakthrough is coming. Look to the person next to you and say, your breakthrough is coming. Amen. And it's saying here that when you are tempted in life to give up, your breakthrough is just around the corner by Joyce Meyer. Let me say it again. When you're tempted to give up, your breakthrough is just around the corner. All right. Um, as you'll know that as a church that the last few months we have felt to change the format of the, of the meeting in church and we have decided to um, make room for the Holy Spirit. And there's a saying there, we say, come Holy Spirit, we need thee. Amen. Less of us and more of God. So the question I want to ask you today, have you made room for the Holy Spirit in your life? Amen. More than anything else, we need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because we're all humans. We have our weakness. We have our strength. But God is in control. As Sean mentioned to you that today um, that we're going to promote um, early bird re registration. Normally it's 60, but we're going to bring it down to 50. So make yourself available to register and pay. And those one who's struggling in any way, we want to help you out. Just come and see me later. Amen? We understand that in life itself, that we understand, and I really believe that as God moves, the enemy moves too. Amen? And I really believe there's a spiritual warfare that we're in. There's a battle that's going on. And I really believe that as we continue to do this battle together, that more than anything else, it says in um, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18 says that we need to be strong in the Lord and in the mighty power. Notice the word, what I'm saying. It says, be strong in the Lord. Stop looking at yourself. Look to God. Be strong in the Lord and His mighty power that more than anything else, we need to put the full armour of God in our life daily because there's a spiritual warfare that's going on. 
And so what do we do here? The first thing, I'll just do it very quickly. The first thing we need to put on is the full armor of God. And we need to put the helmet of salvation. It's to cover our minds. And the enemy comes in in every way through our minds and our hearts, oh God. Amen. So we need to... We need to put on a helmet salvation and we need to be a watchman or the watch, watchman or watchwoman to stand over our heart and our mind and making sure and guard and protect, making sure the enemy doesn't throw things at us. Amen. And when it comes in, we're going to learn to resist it in the name of Jesus. And then the next one is we need to put on the full armor of God. This is the, our heart that we need to protect and we need to guard our hearts. The Word of God says in Proverbs says, Create in me a clean heart and renew in me a righteous spirit. Spirit, That whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, don't let your heart be hard. Don't react. Don't become bitter. Don't allow fear or doubt to come in. Walk in love and walk in forgiveness. Amen? We've got to protect our heart. And the next thing here is put the belt of truth. Belt of truth. What is the belt of truth? It's the Word of God. That the more we spend time in the Word and meditate on His Word, hallelujah, and we've got to speak the Word of God line upon line, Precept upon precept in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we go further down. It says, we're going to put on the shoes of peace. It's the peace of God. More than anything else, when we go through battle, that i got to make sure that I have peace with my God and I have peace with my husband in the name of Jesus. Isn't it right, Isn't it right Barbara? Amen. We're going to watch these things that's going to come in. I'm at peace with you, darling. All right. Is it making sense what I'm saying to you? And then next thing, we're going to put on the shield of faith. The shield of faith is, is the enemy is throwing things at us. Fear, doubt, uncertainty, offense, whatever like that. We're going to resist those fiery darts that come in in the name of Jesus. And then what we do is we take up the sword of the Spirit. We want to cut the claw of the enemy and anger and bitterness and unfor- unforgiveness. We cut these things down in Jesus' name. Amen. So the first point I want to share on is, is um, having faith in God and God alone. I mean, the issue is, I don't care how long you've been a Christian. All right? My concern is, is your faith going deeper in your relationship with Jesus? Amen? Is your faith strong in God? Amen. And, and if I can read this for you, it says in Mark 11, 22, 26 says, he says, have faith in God that Jesus said. And I tell you, if anyone say, we need to speak to that mountain. So often in the midst of the attack, the enemy comes in and mute us and we're trembling with fear. Instead of running to God, we're just standing still. Amen. It says here, say to this mountain, throw yourself down to the sea and does not doubt in your heart, but believe that what they say will happen, it will be done to you. And therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have it and it's yours. And the last bit says, when you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them so your Father in heaven will forgive you. Hallelujah. So the question is, you can ask yourself here, where is your faith at today? Subconsciously, we say our faith is in God, but it's not really. Our faith is on ourselves. Our faith is on people. Our faith is in our surroundings. Our faith is what we have or don't have. Amen? We've got to go deeper into the knowledge and the revelation of God. All right. And it says in Psalms 50:10 says, "Our God who owns the cattle of a thousand hills." And I remember one time we were praying for finances for the church and I was meditating on the scripture. And God says, "You're focusing on the resources you have, you don't have. Our God who owns the cattle of a thousand hills." That God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly all you could ever ask or imagine. Already it's too small. Amen? And it says here, it says we need to speak. So are you speaking life or are you speaking death? Love you, Marty. I'm praying for you. I see it healing from a distance. 
And it says, it says um, in Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Amen. Amen. So in your circumstances, in your situation, are you speaking life or are you speaking death? What's life? It's the Word of God. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Romans 8.31 says, if God is for me, who's against me? Romans 8.37 says, now in all these things, I'm more than a conqueror. 1 Corinthians 15.57 says, now thanks be unto God who causes me to triumph, that I will triumph, I will overcome through Jesus Christ. It's not through you, but our focus subconsciously is always on ourselves in what we can do and what we can't do. Amen. Amen? Amen. So what's your mountain? Is it work? Is it finances? Is it healing? Is it, is it marriage? Is it uncertainty? Amen? We're going to speak to our mountain in the name of Jesus. And it says further down, it says, ask in faith and not doubt. We need to repent from fear, doubt, and uncertainty. And then go further down. It says, when you receive it, when you believe, you receive. It's yours. So how do you do this? You start to believe and to receive it. It's mine. God has given me healing. I'm going to take it in the name of Jesus. I don't care what the circumstances is, whatever happens. I don't go by to what I feel. I'll go by to what I think. I have to stand on what the Scripture says here. Because remember, we're human. We have our ups, we have our downs. Amen? You can't trust your emotions. You can't trust yourself. you got to trust and have faith in God. All right? And then lastly, it says, choose to walk in forgiveness. Otherwise, God will not hear your prayers. And therefore, sometimes when you're walking, he says, where's that peace? I don't feel the peace. What's happening? Because you've allowed fear and doubt and unbelief because you've still got unforgiveness in you. You've got to let it go. As soon as you let it go, then God's peace and God's presence will carry you. And that's how I'm feeling today with my mom. God's peace and His presence is carrying me right now. Because I know where she's at. She's in a better place. She's with my dad, her husband, and her ten siblings up in heaven. They're having a party up there. Forgiveness is not an occasional act. It's a constant attitude. Hello. Hello. We're all humans. I don't know about you, but Sean and I can be quite stubborn. (laughs) Now, you didn't think that I was stubborn, but I can be quite stubborn. (laughs) And you know what? (laughs) When we have a a disagreement, whatever, he says a bit, I say a bit, he says this, 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 this. And sometimes you've got to lay that thing down. Lay the thing down. Man, it's hard. But you've got to do it. How much do I want that peace? You forgive them not for their sake, but for your sake, because you need that peace. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right, the second, um, second section here, it says, build yourself up in the holy faith and praying in the Holy Ghost. It says, keeping in the love of God, which is in Jude 1.12. And it says that it is in, 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 in separable union between the Spirit, the Word, and prayer. To pray in the Holy Spirit means to pray in the will of God and in harmony with the Word of God. He does not speak with two voices. He will never move us to pray for something that is not sanctioned by the Scriptures. God is taking us, I really believe as a church, to a place that we can surrender, yield, submit, and what? To trust God in the process, in the process. And it says, always remember that the nature and the character of God, that He's always good and He's always faithful. 
no matter what you feel, no matter what you think. Amen? Amen. So how do we build ourselves in the most holy faith is reading the Bible. And we've got a devotional book out at the back there. See Danny and Melissa to purchase it. And I find I like this one. It says, I hear his whisper. Because we have such a busy life, all right, I haven't got time to read the whole two chapters of this book, you know what I mean? But it's really good. And the first one here, it says here, I love you because you're my child. Amen? And he puts a scripture on and explains everything and every areas that you can repent of. This is a really good one. It's a short one, simple, but it's really powerful. Amen? So these are some books that you can purchase Maybe, Aaron, you can take it up there for me. Thank you very much. All right? So, build yourself up in the holy faith is reading the Word of God, and it's about having a, a daily devotion with Jesus every day. Amen? And the next thing is that the Word of God says in Romans 4.17 says, God is able to bring life to the dead. We're going to call the new things to come forth as, as though they're not what they will be. We have to, again, speak life over our situations and our circumstances from a distance. Amen? And we've got to keep on building it on the Word of God, built upon line upon line, precept upon precept. And this scripture that I've just learned to read it and meditate, and it's talking about here in Isaiah 11 verse 2, 2 said, it says, and the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Who is that? It's Jesus. Jesus, amen? Jesus became the living Word of God and He lives and He dwells among us. And when you read the Word of God, you're bringing Jesus in your home. You're bringing Jesus in your circumstances, in your situation, amen? Amen. And that's why the ploy of the enemy is if he can stop you from grabbing your Bible and, and, and reading your devotion book, he's one, Amen? And you've got to get into the Word. You've got to get into your daily devotion. And it says further down. And then the next one, it says, when you read the Word of God, wisdom comes in there. What's wisdom is to know what to do, how to handle it. That when you start reading the Word of God, God will give you the right mindset, how to handle that situation and circumstances. I'm amazed how much I'm handling it with my mom passing. God's peace and God's presence. And you know what? My mom taught me how to pray. She always had her Bible, her Chinese Bible, on her bed. And many of you don't know, but I didn't get saved until I was 21. So my mom was always on, my, on her knees praying and crying for me that I would get saved and converted. And she knew how to pray. She went into a closet. She would grab a Bible. She would cry out to God and pray and pray and keep on loving us. And when times are hard, when times are difficult with people, she would say to me, Sandra, let it go. Let offense go. God is good. God is in control. And that's how I learned it. And I like her because she was, she was so faithful. She was so constant. She had such a big heart for God. She, um, she was, she was very generous. Whatever need there was that she will help anyone out. She was a very loving woman, a loving woman. She taught me how to love the Lord thy God of all my heart and mind and soul and spirit. And that's why I learned it from. Amen. Okay. You get wisdom there. And when you get wisdom, you get understanding and God will teach you and counsel you what to do. And the last thing is, he says, and what understanding in how and what to do to have the fear of God in you. The fear of God is not God taking a a baseball bat and just pounce you on your head because you've done something wrong. The fear of God, what is the meaning of the fear of God? is to get a revelation of who your God is. When you get a revelation of who God is, a vision of who God is, 
When offense comes in, anger or bitterness, it makes you bow on your knees and repent of your sin and put things right. Amen? So let me explain to you what the, the fear of the Lord is. The fear of the Lord is a deep and seated reverence and awe of God that causes men who wants to please Him and at all costs to put things right in the heart, the mind, and the attitude, and the behavior. Amen? And the next one is prayer and fasting. The Word of God says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, make your request to God with a thankful heart, and then God's peace, God's presence will come upon you. So in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of the situation, it says, be anxious for nothing. But so often people in the midst of the situation, they, they don't move, they stay there. Instead of going to God, instead of running to God, instead of praying about the situation, they don't do anything. And that's the ploy of the enemy. When you go to God, when you pray about it, then His peace and His presence will carry you wherever you go. And that's what I'm feeling with my mom, because I know where she's gone to, because I prayed about it. I sought God. And when I sought God, then His peace, His presence carried me wherever I am in. Amen? Amen. Is it making sense what I'm saying to you? And the last thing is, uh, the last thing in this building yourself in the faith, is praying in the Holy Ghost. Remember, we are charismatic Pentecostal church. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in tongues. It's a prayer language. Amen? That God is looking for people who will worship Him in the Spirit and the truth of God. Is it making sense? Amen. And it's saying here uh, that when you speak in tongues, it's a prayer language, you speak to God, that the devil doesn't know what you're saying. It's edifying it. It's building you up in the name of Jesus. All right? And it says in Romans 8, 26, 27 says, it says the Spirit helps us, you know what? Weakness. Remember, we're human. We have our ups and our downs. Sometimes we get up. We don't feel like praying. We don't feel like spending time with God. But that is the time you should do it. Amen. So when, when I come before God, it says, it says, the Spirit helps me in my weakness. When I start praying in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit comes in in partnership with me. And I feel that strength. I feel that peace. I feel the right mindset I can handle today. I can handle what holds, to, you know, what's happening tomorrow. Is it making sense? We're going to do more praying in tongues in the name of Jesus. Don't be so scared of it. It's powerful. God is a spirit and God is looking for those people who will worship Him, what? In spirit and the truth of God. Amen. Don't be timid Christians. And then, then when you start praying in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will show you and guide you how to pray. How do I pray? How do I handle this? And then it says further down, it says, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. Then when you start praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit comes in and He shows you where your heart is at. If you've got offense, if you've got attitude problem, then you show you what it is and then you start to repent. It's like that peace and that presence comes in. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And then it says further down here, and then that you and the Holy Spirit is going to pray in accordance to the will of God. Not according to you, but the will of God. Remember, the nature and the character of God is good. He's always good and He's always faithful. Amen? Amen. That we've got to push through into worship. So often when we come before God, God is looking for broken and a contrite heart that He will not not despise. We've got to press in there when we don't feel like it. It's not relied upon feelings. It relied upon the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Go further down. And it says here um, that so often in this situation here that we don't praise Him, we don't worship Him. The moments when it's hard, Betsy, amen, when your, your brother has gone to the Lord. 
These are the moments that we need to start to praise Him. Sing to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Make melody in your heart. That's what God wants. All right? And then from that Scripture there, it says, keeping in the love of God. You know what it means by keeping? The fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. Amen? Faithfulness, self-control. Amen? Oh, that one is a hard one. Self-control. All right? And it says here, God's love is constant, but it's not manifested in every places of our heart and every condition. But if we are to keep yourself in the love of God, we must seek Him, seek His will, obey everything He shows us and keeping ourselves in the love of God. Amen? And that's how you do it. And the third point I want to say is when you're going through a battle, Anna, it says, Jacob wrestle with man and God. Jacob wrestle with men and God. Look, at, let me read the Scripture and I'll, I'll, I'll build on it there. Genesis 32, 24 says to 30 says, Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him, which was an angel, till daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hips are wrenched. As he wrestled with man, then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I will not let you go until you bless me. And it says here, the man asked him, what is your name? And Jacob told him what it is. And the man said, you will no longer be called Jacob. You're going to be called Israel. Okay. And he said there, because you have struggled, what? With men and God and you have overcome. All right. And then Jacob asked him and then and the, and the angel said, and he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, it is because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared. Okay, let me build to this point here. He said he struggled with man and God. Can I be honest with you? <laughs> so many of you are still struggling with man. What do I mean by that? You've got issues. You've got anger. You've got unforgiveness. You've got hurts and pain and disappointment. You're still sitting there. That's why you're not moving. You're not moving. You've got to get to that place of desperation. You have to get before God like Jacob. He says, I will not let go of you until you bless me. I will not let go of you until you bless me. We're going to hang on to it like a pig dog. Have you seen a pig dog hang on to something? He won't let go of it. That's what we should be. Hang on to the promises of God and not to let it go. Amen. Is it because you've overcome man and God? Amen. Not only that, but God says, I'm going to change your name. Not only change his name, but he had an encounter with God. Amen. God wants you to have an encounter with him. That's so much more that God wants to open up. I have many encounters of God because I put myself in that place. I said, I'm not going to let go of it until you bless me. I will not let go of it until you give me that peace, until you give me that victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you hear what I'm trying to say? Amen. You've got to get to that place like a pig dog, not letting it go in the name of Jesus. I want to share to you that God never wastes our pain. Our challenges. Everything is allowed for His sovereign purposes. When we go through breaking point, it becomes your breaking, your blessing point. Let me read again. When you go through breaking point, it becomes your blessing point. Jacob wrestled with life's challenges and the moment of isolation and confrontation set the stage for an extraordinary encounter with God. I see God's face all the time because I need Him. I need that peace. I need that peace. We've got to push in, press into God. 
Amen. And I, I, I said to that lady, I said to that lady, I've been counseling. That's where the message comes from. This is a lady I love her very much. They've been working through a lot of things with her about life, about hurts and pains and disappointments. And this lady, I said to her here, before you see a breakthrough in the physical realm, you need to break through in the spirit first. Hello, let me say it again. Before you see a breakthrough in the physical realm, you need to see, you need to break through in the spirit. Amen. And you know what that lady did? She went to God, desperately crying out to God, went through scriptures, and she let go of a lot of stuff. Moved here from Thunderbird for six months. She said, for 17 years, I have never had a full-time job. And God has blessed her with a job she started on Monday. See how God, can you hear what I'm trying to say? Is it making sense? What was the three point? Have faith in God. Build yourself up in the holy faith. Praying in the spirit. Keeping in the love. Jacob wrestled with God. Not wrestle with God, but with men and God, and he won. See, some of you, you're still here. You're still battling with men. You're still battling with issues. Oh, there's so much more God wants to give you. Oh, the victory, the blessings is just ready to pour it out to you. But you gotta work here, folks. You gotta work here. Amen. You gotta work here. My mom taught me that. My mom taught me to love. My mom taught me to forgive. My mom taught me to be generous. Roxy, that's what you like. Your parents. Generosity. Amen. You see any need, you, you just want to bless people. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, let's close our eyes right now. Father God, we just want to come before you this day with humbleness and humility. And to know that you love each and every one of us, that you have a plan and a purpose for us. In the name of Jesus.